Holy freak! Hey guys, welcome back to another video about the electric Ducati build that Lord Kurt and I are doing. So last video you guys saw that we actually got it on its very first ride. We were able to tune it. We got the powertrain working. Super, super cool stuff. So this video, we want to get the whole thing wired in. We need turn signals, headlights, tail light, basically everything besides the powertrain electronics need to get wired in still. So that being said, let's get right down to work. You guys remember this is a giveaway bike, so jump in the giveaway if you guys have not already. So we had left the bike stock wiring harness intact on the bike because we thought we were going to reuse at least some of the wiring. The stock wiring harness of course had a lot of unnecessary wires that we didn't need. Things like the oil pressure sensor, regulator wiring, ECU wiring, and just a lot of other things for the original gas engine. Originally I thought I could simply strip the old wiring down to use what we need. Turn signals, brake light, headlight controls, etc. But the stock wiring harness had a lot of dead ends that would only work if all the original computers and modules for the gas engine were plugged in. So what I hoped I'd be able to do myself and decently quickly turn into a larger project that needed Kurt's help since he designed a whole new electrical system for the bike that I wasn't familiar with. I didn't want to plug into power or grounds that were the wrong voltage or led somewhere it wasn't supposed to and compromise all his hard work. So I at least started running wires and figuring out the wire colors for the various components and cleaning it all up. As I was doing that, Lord Kurt went on to cut and weld in the last structural bar for the original frame. You can see there is a section of the frame that all ties into one X section right in the middle of the bike, which is the most flexible spot and calling for some extra reinforcement. It was probably plenty strong, but it was a just in case type of thing. Plus it added a bit more of cool factor to the bike. Off camera as well, we installed the display, shortened and tightened the handlebars, and just generally did a lot of small stuff that wasn't really worth mentioning. At this point in the build, most of the items left to do are nitpicky and a lot less of a priority. Of course, there were a few things to figure out that took some time and things that didn't go quite as smoothly as expected, but in the end, it all came out exactly as we wanted and fully functional. All right, here it is, fully assembled. Thank you so much, Lord Kurt. This freaking knocked it out of the park. This thing is sitting basically as it's going to sit. Obviously not colored, not anything, but this is the general stance. We do have a few more things to add, little small things, but this is generally how it's going to look. As far as like the electronics go, I put on a new display here, which is there. calibrated for our speed for roughly for our battery voltage and a couple other things on it. I've given it a little bit of test riding so far. You can see I put some miles yep. on it. Um, ran through also installing all of the, you can see the light on the wall there, all the high and low beams, yep. the turn signals. Super put cool. new signals on because the other ones looked like old outdated. They look kind yeah. of Yeah, like and we would have had to figure out flasher relays and everything for it, which would have been a big pain. But we just got sequential turn signals here and they did the exact thing that we needed them to do. So that was perfect. So we just got, I mean, Ultimately, it simplified the wiring a little bit, but it's all working. It is fully legal in terms of lighting. Rear obviously has the same things. I look at the right signal, left signal. The running light is on. Pull yeah, the brake dude. and it turns the brake light on. Dude. So we got it all working. For now, the wiring is not all cut to length. So I just got it kind of bunched up and under the tank so it's ready to ride. You can see yep. some of it in there is not where it's going to ultimately sit. I've um, got a new yeah. DC converter attached to it and then once we disassemble it, I'll reassemble it with everything cut to length. The goal for this was to make it sitting and functioning 100% as it will. So when yeah. we disassemble it, we know it goes back together the way we want it to. For sure. This uh, is the last stage you guys are going to see it in looking like a crazy bike as it is right now. Next step basically is we're going to tear this whole thing down, paint everything, and make this look like an actual super cool electric stealth bike. We did put cotter pins through these so that they can't loosen on us. We did also attach it through the key switch. I don't know if you saw that there. Yeah. Um, each of the indicators here shows up when you do your different things, high beams, turn signals. So this was a little bit of a trick to figure out how to program. Uh, I have some footage of that if you guys want to jump over to my channel and see Yeah, that. dude, jump on over to his channel. He has a lot more in-depth stuff on this. Some controller programming, things like that. We cranked it up to the max that it could, and it rides like a dream now. So I'm excited. Dude, to see I haven't that. ridden it since this guy juiced I it up. Know. So basically, that's what we want to do to end off this video is just do a full ride. I want to get my first impressions, kind of tell you guys how it feels to ride this thing. And yeah, just how, you know, the power, 0 to 60 times if we can get those, top speed, maybe. <laughs> I did already crank it just in like a little stretch from this street to that street. 
and I got a pretty good number. Okay, so all right. I'll be impressed with what you can I, I'm hoping I am. So there we go. Let me get my jacket on, and we'll give this thing my first test after the new tune. All right, let's take a second out to thank today's video sponsor real quick. This is actually very applicable to you guys. Uh, this is the Fantic X8 air inflator this is like the mini version of the fantic one you guys already saw in a previous video so this is it the fantic x8 battery operated tire inflator yeah and just like the other fantic it has the same operating system um, you can kind of select which you know different things you want to air up that's car moped you know bike tires basketballs that kind of thing so let's just go ahead and run a little test on the ducati's tires all right and there you go it says 31.1 psi so i'm just going to pump this up to about 35 psi i think that's about right for this tire so let's do it let's let's see how it sounds this is the first time i'm hearing it first time you're hearing it Yeah, so there you go. Not too loud, not, you know, obviously it's an air compressor, but for what it is, airing up motorcycle tires, car tires, if you have to, I mean, this is an awesome thing to just stick in your trunk and take it wherever you go. All right, so thank you so much, Fantic, for sending me this and sponsoring this video. This, again, is the Fantic X8. If you guys want to check it out, there's a link in the description. Pretty cool unit. All right, let's do it. This is the first ride after Lorker has tuned this thing that I get to feel it. So I'm ready to be impressed. Oh shoot, yeah, that's quick. That's quick. I like it. I like it already. We have a second uh, lever on here. This is going to be for regen braking. Currently it does nothing, but we're going to wire it in for regen braking in just a second. And naturally my brain wants to pull both. Even a normal motorcycle, you pull this, you know, when you're braking for the clutch electric sport bike you pull it for the rear brake and so naturally i'm trying to pull this and i pull this first and it feels like there's no brakes for just a second when in fact we have full braking i just am pulling the wrong lever apparently lord kurt got this thing up to 96 oh father mucker good gracious <laughs> what <laughs> what the heck holy frick dude this thing is quick told you it doesn't slow down either. You'll take it and I'm not going to tell the number I got to, but uh -huh. up to as far as I was pulling it, it was still doing its thing just as powerful. Dude, so. I am excited to get this thing on a full strip because just these little stretches here, I just one crank up hey, to like 45. Take it out there. It's It's got all the legal elements on it. I guess I could, huh? Yeah. I guess that's next. I guess we better just get out to the real road and see how this thing does. We're going to try to get a 060 time right now. And we're also maybe gonna hit a top speed, but you'll, I kind of want up to, to be it. done before we hit the official get the numbers. You know, I was within probably 10 miles an hour up to top speed. Okay, just all last right. night. So okay, well, I'll probably hit it then. All right, let's do this. This is like my fourth or fifth time maybe riding this bike since it's been you know completed as far as powertrain goes. And this is definitely a new animal since Kurt tuned it again put some new components on it whatnot and uh yeah i'm definitely excited to test it out so we're gonna go over to a strip where you know nobody's there and we're gonna just test it out a little bit see how it does this thing is an absolute animal good gracious this thing feels good it feels really good and yeah i'm definitely impressed just overall ride quality of this thing fantastic fantastic and it's completely silent. Oh, that's such a different feeling, man. Most of the time when you're sitting at a stoplight on a motorcycle, it sounds like this. But it doesn't. It's quiet. <laughs> it's an electric Ducati. And Kurt programmed this, by the way, this is an accurate mile per hour reading and an accurate odometer reading as well. So we've already gone 1.7 miles. And so we'll know how much we get on one charge. The estimated range we'll get uh, based on this ride and how much energy we use. All right, we're going to get a 060 pole officially right now as soon as this light turns green. I'm just going to crank it. There we go. There it is. <laughs> Such a different feeling. This thing pulls. We're at 60, it's still 60, and this thing freaking pulls. Woo! Wow. This is it, boys. 
Let's see how quick we can get this thing up to. Oh my gosh. Bro. <laughs> Dude, he's cooking. <laughs> oh, frick. Holy frick, man. Oh, we need a longer stretch than that. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm gonna do another official 060. Hopefully no one's gonna be behind me. All right, here we are. You can see zero miles per hour. Let's do it. There it is. Holy frick! Wow, that sounds so cool. Like a jet engine, dude. Wow, that was a little sketchy hitting that pothole that fast. Whoa, look at this thing, perfectly balanced. Absolute freaking machine, dude. Oh, wow. Lord Kurt has seriously outdone himself. That was quick, man. That was almost scary fast because it pulls all the way up. Normal motorcycles, you have to hit like, you know, you're in fifth gear at that point and you're barely getting any until it redlines and then you barely get any. That thing was freaking ripping the whole way up to about 100 miles an hour. Really? That's about what I got. I wasn't looking at it at the end, obviously, but. And that was just a strip that's like. Oh, that was not nearly enough. Probably a quarter miles. Nah, a little longer than a quarter mile, but that's yeah. not enough because you Man. got to at the end of it, so you're not going to yeah. get your top speed. Absolutely. But quarter mile time is going to be more impressive than the 0 to 60 time is. Probably. 106.3 width. Like still resting, but obviously. it's like one. Yeah. As of now, like one volt, but that, that volt between 107 and 106, that's the fastest volt. And then 106, yeah. it's going to be super linear discharge, but you've got five miles on it. For sure. Dude, that's crazy. At hard pulls, not like five easy miles. Uh-huh. It was a it was a slight bit sketchy when it was pro I was probably doing 85 and it was still pulling hard like the front end's lifting and everything and there was a big old manhole just big bump going boom <laughs> it's like oh frick but it straightened itself right back out so really smooth yeah I know I didn't die impressed I'm definitely impressed I am definitely impressed you outdid yourself on this one I'm gonna have to add like applause sounds for you every time I mention Lori Kurt. All right, ready? Let's gun it. I'll race you. <laughs> Dang, dude. Man, what an experience that was. Lord Kurt, you have outdone yourself. <laughs> what, what an incredible machine. I don't know if we actually hit an official top speed or not. I don't think we did. I think we only got up to 96 or something on that little strip. And you never like felt the top out, right? No, I never felt it'll, the top out. It was it'll show, pulling. It'll actually top out because it'll hit the You'll feel voltage. it. Yeah. You'll it'll absolutely just, it'll feel it. will dial back the amps. So yeah. Won't have it. it won't be trying. It'll just be holding that speed. Yeah. So you'll feel it hit a top speed. Anyway, so that's it. Obviously, next video, we are tearing this whole thing back down. I'm going to paint it the whole thing. Um, we're going to do, obviously, the last little things we have to do on it. But then once we reassemble it, this thing's going to be a completely 100% done bike. And, uh, one and of once you will get to have it. And one of you will get to have it, yeah. But we're very excited. After riding this thing for the first time at that speed, dude, I, I can't wait to get this thing fully done. I wish we could keep it. Honestly, at this point, I wish we could keep it. But we committed, so what are you guys getting it? So anyway, that's it. We're gonna get back to work tearing this thing down. And uh, yeah, cool. We'll see you next video. Thanks. <laughs> Oh wow, look how cute he is. Look how cute he is, little dude.